nothing anymore for the two of you. Love line. Love line. Love line. Sure. There, there we are. go. Uh, All right. Well, just a few seconds late. No. It's the Love Line. I'm Adam Crow. It's Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1 800 LOVE 191. Fax number 310 854 4455. Dr. Drew is a board certified physician and addiction medicine specialist. A perfect circle is our uh, guest tonight. Billy Howard Dallas here. Maynard James Keenan, both from the band. Maynard, uh, of course, you know from. Uh, Tool and uh, you still know from Tool and so let's talk about uh, Perfect Circle. I have some uh, dates, by the way, where you can uh, find them if you're listening uh, out here at the Arrowhead Pond. That's uh, tomorrow night with uh, Nine Inch Nails, San Francisco on the uh, next night, then Portland, Spokane, Sacramento, Salt Lake, and uh, Denver all in the uh, next few nights uh, after that, all with uh, Nine Inch Nails. Correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, how is that, uh, Billy? You worked with uh, Nine Inch Nails, right? Yep. I was on uh, the Downward Spiral Tour with them six years ago. Ooh, what a while. May have, uh, may have seen that. Universal uh, Amphitheater? Yeah, and then at the Forum. I think the Universal shows were first. Yeah. Yeah, I was, uh, I was there. Great concerts and uh, great um, keyboards. All on these, uh, like, uh, pogo sticks. You see that, Drew? It's... Well, you know, it's like a large spring with a yeah, keyboard on it. Around. You can pound on it and yeah. knock it all over the place. I don't know who thought of that, but it was uh, it was a stroke of genius. Is it extremely hot in here, or no. is that just me all You're of a sudden? You're just suddenly having a flush. Huh. What do you know? It's the alcohol. It's the alcohol. Is withdrawal. it the booze? Yeah. Finally. It's the withdrawal? Finally. All right. Oh, and you've been drinking? I missed it? Well, not tonight. No, of course but, not. But i got to drink soon, <laughs> otherwise, you know, my skin's going to start crawling. Uh, Perfect Circles uh, got a, a CD out, which uh, I hear uh, debuted at uh, number four on the uh, rock chart, which is uh, the highest uh, debut for a uh, CD ever, apparently, uh, rock CD. And uh, what do you guys attribute that to? Um, somebody doing some clever marketing and press releases. Yeah, somebody uh, did their job, but don't you think it's uh, part of uh, them knowing your uh, prior work and ongoing work? Mm-hmm, that would be my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, more power to them. Yeah. The uh, CD is uh, called, uh, oh, man, what did I, I write that it. down? Oh, yes. Uh, uh, Drew, you say the CD because you're French. Uh, you're a French major. No, do it in English. That way you say a dirty word. Mer de Gnomes. Mm. Nice touch. Uh, did I screw that up? Mm. Sea of Names? Drew, say it in a proper French accent. Mer de Gnomes. Thank you uh, very much. And it is uh, out. We're going to uh, hear something off it. Actually, a couple of cuts off it uh, before the night is through. But first, we'll get to the phones. Joe? Hey. Hey, you're 19. What's up? Uh, not a whole lot. Uh, first, I just want to say, hey, Maynard, you, your voice is beautiful, man. Thank you. Thank you. It's awesome. What are you wearing? Huh? What am I wearing? <laughs> Maynard, don't attempt subtle humor with our uh, callers. It'll never work. Okay. Subtle anything. Yes. What's up there, uh, caller Joe? Um... <clears throat> Well, my girlfriend is 20 years old, and we've been together for about four or five months now. And uh, right at the beginning of our relationship, um, we're both recovering addicts. That's when we both decided to, to kick it and start, you know, kind of trying to get stuff together. Um, she's never had an orgasm, and, like, to this day, so it's like... Never with you, never ever? Never ever, but... Never ever. And like, she's, she's 20? She's 20. Yeah. And she, she gets really close. She just... Right. After a while, it's like she either can't take it anymore or just nothing happens. Yeah. Women do that. Guys never do that. Yeah, that... Oh, 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 oh. Guys never go like, oh, 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 no, 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 I'm not coming. Forget it. No, it's done. Women can do that. I don't know what that what that is. But once they shut down, that's it. Does she do that? Um, kind of. Well, I don't know. Is she on any medication? Uh, yeah, she's on... Trazodone. Yeah. She's on. Um, she's on Paxil. Yeah. That's gonna make it pretty tough for her. And she's got. Um, she's on a bunch of different medications for her thyroid. Yeah, that won't matter. That won't matter but at all. But the the Paxil, particularly Trazodone, possibly can make it very difficult to climax for some people. All right. So at least you have a chemical excuse. All right. I wish I had that myself. I suspect that's what it is, Joe. All righty. Yeah, but so, what about never? She hasn't always been on yeah, these drugs, has yeah, she? Yeah, but now she, how long have you guys been together? Uh, about five months. Now that she has a boyfriend, she's almost getting there, you know. Okay. She's worried about some medicine. You talk to the doctor about maybe switching to Serazone or to Wellbutrin. Okay. okay. Did, she right. ever, did she ever masturbate? Yeah. 
And uh, nothing there either, huh? Uh, just slightly. It's like there's an orgasm once in a while, but it's minor. So she uh, does... She, she like you to connect, I guess. She has had an orgasm then. You just... Not, not, not during intercourse, and when she does, it's not like the way when we're having sex it's not like what she would expect it's nothing like powerful or explosive you know what she has had it during masturbation she's not telling I'm, I'm asking about masturbation now no she has when she's masturbated but it's not it's not the same I guess I don't know I guess I'd have to you need to talk to her a little bit about this yeah. it's not the same now because she's on meds I bet she had done it before she was on meds and it was fine and that's what she's looking for now wondering why it's not happening well butrin Sarah's on okay all right uh, all right Joe Thanks. good luck in your um, sobriety Tina Tina. Oh, Hello? Jesus. Is your radio up, Tina? I'm sorry, that was my CD. Okay. What's up? You're um, 15. Yeah. First, I just wanted to uh, answer a question to you. A chode is a penis that is too thick for its length. A chode. Oh, a chode. No. No. I think it's just slang for a uh, penis. No. Okay. Okay. So, Here we go. Move right go on. ahead. Um... Anyway, uh, yeah, well, Adam, you're, you're like, awesome. You're a cool guy. Hey, Thanks. can you have a question for us? Go right ahead with the question. Yeah. Okay, um, well, I, I, like, have given a whole lot of blowjobs before. Uh-huh. And I think I'm addicted to it, and I want to know if that's possible or, and if it makes me a nympho. And you're 15. Yeah. How many have you given? I, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know how many, but probably like 30 guys. 30 guys at 15? Have you had sex before? Once. Do you have any fantasies about being a stripper or anything like that? No. Mm, really? I'm addicted. No pun intended. And uh, you, uh, 30, huh? You're 50. Where were you when I was in high school? <laughs> that is my question. That's going to be the name of my next book. Is there a categorization for that? Is there a gaggle of geese and a... If, right? I was, if you, I was in high school with you, I would... <laughs> yeah, I think it's a uh, brood of blowjobs or <laughs> something. <laughs> Uh, a, 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 a coven. Hey, uh, Tina. Flamboyant. Yeah. Uh, what's up? Where's your daddy? Um. Well, he. I don't know who he is. I see. Yeah. Sometimes I don't know who my dad is either, man. Like the other night when we were. No, you never met him. Mm -mm. Uh All right. And uh, stepdaddy? Nope. Uh. So your dad just kind of abandoned the family. Well, my mom kicked him out. And you were how old when that happened? What? Before you were born, okay. He got kicked out because, what, he was a bad guy? Um, he molested my brother. Mm. Does your brother do anything to you? Uh-uh. Did uh -huh. anybody do anything to you? No. Sort of sounds like something happened. Well, listen, let's just assume it hasn't. You, do you want to stop, or do you, what's your question? I, I just, well, I don't know if that's even possible, or if it, if it makes me a nympho. The, 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 the term nympho doesn't really have any meaning anymore. There are people that are sexually addicted and there are sexual compulsives, and it certainly I, it would put you in the compulsive range. I could have been, I could have been molested because yeah. my sister was molested and yeah. so was my brother. Yeah. And I don't remember parts of my childhood. Okay. Well, we, 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 well, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say you were. I mean, I don't, I don't want to label you, but I can hear your voice. Yeah. And uh, I can, I can, uh, you're telling me what your actions are, and it sounds like you got some issues. The road to compulsivity is easily uh, sort of uh, entered with sexual abuse, okay? And then you asked if you were addicted. Is there addiction in your family? Yeah. Okay. So you may tr also be a true addict. Addicts use sex sometimes is a way of regulating feelings, a way of getting away from unpleasantness to try to feel better. So you have you have the compulsion created from the sexual abuse with the addictive tendency and the progressivity of addiction and the fact that these sorts of mechanisms make you feel good. So you overuse them and they can hurt you. All right, so what should she do? Uh, That's you, Drew. You know, <laughs> not, <laughs> no, does she want to do something? You want to stop, Tina? Well, I mean, I don't want to stop completely, but I just... I I, I do cut down to like three blowjobs a week or something like that. No, I people, Get the I patch. Like I what do you want to do? Like. Get the semen patch. What's that? The book. I do people I don't even like. like oh, where were you? Nobody liked me in high school. Yeah. Imagine how much, how much oral sex I would have gotten. All right, Tina, listen, honey, you're, you're acting out. You know you're acting out. That's why you're calling the show. You, there's a part of you that knows it's wrong. You can't stop yourself, but you're going to have to stop yourself. You have multiple options. You can go to a 12-step program. Mm -hmm. SA would be an appropriate one, although I don't know, 15. How, do you have, like, a number for that? Uh, 
Do you have a pad and pencil? Yep. Where are you calling from? Illinois. Illinois? Mm -hmm. uh, just, uh, I'll tell you what, can't she just uh, call uh, AA and yeah. uh, they can oh, refer yeah. her? Absolutely, they'll refer to your area. And I, but I think, Tina, if you can get an individual kind of a counselor or therapist, it'd do you a lot of good. Okay. I already go to the therapist. There you go. We'll talk Good. to him or her about, about some 12-step program, okay? Do you tell her or uh, him about this activity? Yeah, he says he says that um, I probably did get molested. That's what it sounds like, yeah. And that, that they're going to put me into hypnosis. Uh, 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 See? Why? Yeah, exactly. Why? You, you, but, Adam, you'll notice that some people do talk to their therapists about their sexual behaviors. You understand? Uh, Drew, why? First off, I'm I'm going to the shrink tomorrow. So on the eve, somehow instinctively, you bring this up every uh, week. Every week, he, Drew wants me to go to my therapist and uh, walk in and start masturbating. No, talking about the fact. That I you told walk, you, and if I talk about it, I'll start doing it. So I, ask me to talk about it. It's well, like asking that, me to do it. That will have meaning to the How therapist. How dare you, by the way? How dare you bring that up in front of our guests and all these calls? About the film, <laughs> Danielle. Yes. Uh, uh, you're 18. What's up? Yeah, um, three weeks ago I had an abortion. Um, I was five weeks pregnant, and um, I, we finally got to the point where we could have sex again, where it was safe for us to have sex again. And now I'm unable to do it, like emotionally, and I'm, I'm unable to do it. It doesn't hurt or anything, and we can mess around and stuff. But it, like comes to the point of like actual penetration, and like I remember like the abortion and like what I went through, and I like really get scared. And like, who's this with? Your boyfriend? Boyfriend? How old is he? He's 18 too. All right. Well, five weeks. I mean, you went through a pretty traumatic experience. Well, I mean, I just want to know what I can do to stop, like, the, like, I mean, I can mess around with him and we can do stuff. It's just, like, when it comes to, like, penetration, I remember, like, it really makes me scared because I can remember exactly what I went through and what it felt like. And well, is it that you're going, out. are you going, is it the act that got you pregnant that got you the abortion that freaks you out or is it just sort of having your legs spread? I think it's just like that, yeah. It's just the thought of what I had to go through and what, like, went in me and, like, the noises. Like, I can hear the noises and, like, feel like, like I was there again, you know? Have you been rendered powerless at some other time in your life? Um, Is powerlessness an issue for you? Not, no, not really. Hmm. What kind of noises? The vacuum. Gurgling? Yeah, the vacuum and, like, I, because I was on the nitrous, I did nitrous. Hmm. And, like, I can, like, smell it, because you know how the thing smells? I can smell it, and I can hear the noises, and I can hear, like, the nurse talking to me and stuff. It's like I totally replay it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but why... The, why the brain's a wonderful instrument, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, uh, meanwhile, someone probably gave you a compliment uh, last week that you can't remember. But uh, this you'll never forget. But the post-traumatic stress reaction you're having, it seems somewhat more intense than usual. And, uh, listen... The, I, I would never take away from a woman the amount, the intensity of uh, this experience. The people do not prepare for even just the biological changes, let alone the psychological issues. But even so, this seems like a little more than that. You're insane. No. True. Mm -hmm. Whispered that. Did you but, say that? But the fact that uh, you, know, you sort of maybe went in predisposed in some way, that's why I asked about powerlessness. All right. Drew, I'm going to kill myself. Yeah. I have to talk okay. to another woman well, who's been through Danielle, that. you got to slow. You, you will get over this with time, but uh, provided you don't ha start having panic or anxiety that starts to generalize, it, it should slowly get better. Just hopefully your boyfriend will be sensitive and be, could take it slow. Yeah, he's been really good through the whole right. thing. It, it's yeah. a post traumatic stress reaction. It should get yeah, better. Just have okay. him be supportive. Be good. All right. All right. Thank All right. you. Well, don't get pregnant again. I That's won't. good. I mean, in a way, it's a good thing because it'll probably prevent you from getting pregnant again. No, Neil? No. At least we don't want to. No, yeah. for a couple weeks. You don't think so? For a few weeks. Let me say something. Danielle? Yeah. Hey, you're still not using the pull-out method, are you? No. What are you using? I'm on birth control pills and we're using condoms. Well, if we ever do have sex again. Right. What, was, what happened the first time, the time when you got pregnant? Um, I had gone off birth control because I was going to start the shot, the depo, and I went off for like three months and then just, it happened and <laughs> it was just a mistake. Okay. So. All right, take, take care of yourself. She went out going on depot because she couldn't ever take the pill. Neil? Well, listen, don't uh, kick her while she's down, Drew, for Christ's sake. Neil? Yeah. You're 17. What's up? Yeah. Um, anyways, I have a question for Dr. Drew. Mm hmm And uh, Adam, I don't want to hear any smart remarks when you tell him off the phone. <laughs> All right. Ooh, anyways, he almost hung up uh, on you such as it was. Yeah. What? You're lucky I'm tired. <laughs> okay, you have the anyways, energy to um, push the button. For the last time. couple of weeks, yeah. um... I've been having dreams about, like, my guy friends and, like, messing around with them and stuff. And then, like, I, right when I, like, wake up from the dreams, I'd be having an orgasm. Mm. And, I mean, I have a girlfriend and everything, and I know I'm not gay, and I'm just wondering, you know, why 
why I'm having dreams about this kind of stuff, you know. And you're so, gay. True, please. Said he wasn't gay. How do you know you're not gay? Because I, I'm just not. I mean, I don't, I don't have any thoughts like when I'm, you know, in my normal, when I'm not sleeping, you know. It's like the, just the last couple of weeks, I just have been having dreams about guys and that. You never, know? never before. But never before. I've never had even thoughts, you know, just regular thoughts about it. What are you doing with these guys? Like, um, they're giving me a hand job, and I'm giving them a hand job. So really? Like you can't do better than that in a dream? That's low self-esteem if you dream about hand jobs. <laughs> it's a you, dream. Go for it. Yeah, you should be getting into uh, cornholing and uh, BJ's. I mean, you go, you know, live a little. It's not like anyone's going to hear it like the rest of the country. Right. right. <laughs> for tonight. <laughs> yeah. All right, so, uh, and these are specific friends of yours? Yeah, like best friends of mine. Right. Like, well, if you're good guy friends. But if you're not gay, then what are you worried about? Well, I'm just wondering why I would be having... Well, they're normal. Like it's, it's normal. It, it, everyone gets those sorts of feelings of some type. And you may just have more than you know more of your share of this than, uh, than average. And as long as it's not something that's troubling you in terms of your identity or your choices, it's just one of those feelings you get. Yeah. It's, you know, people have aggressive feelings. People have sexual feelings that sort of wash over them. And they're feelings. They're okay. I mean, they're part of you. But they're look, at it, look at it this way. How, many's, uh, how, how much ass do you kick in your dreams? Right. You know what I mean? How many people? How many, how many people have you stabbed? How many people have you shot? How many people have you bludgeoned? None. That's just, I'm still, this is just my immediate family. I'm not even yeah. into the rest of uh, you, society. You kill people in your dreams? All the time. What? All the time. I beat the crap out of people constantly. Oh, oh well. you're gay. You are sick. Yeah. yeah. You don't do that? You are sick. Really? You scare me now. Oh. Man, listen, you're next. I Tonight. Didn't... Tonight, you're on my list, I buddy. I know you, man. You don't do that? Don't you get in those dreams Everybody where you're fighting, you're course. punching, you're shooting, uh, you know, you're strangling people, you cutting their heart out holding it above your head so that the the rest of the world can see you don't have that no no that no but there's a yeah. at that point is there aggressive feelings no right aggressive feelings. all right then i get up and i go out in the world and it kicks the crap out of me mm -hmm. i don't do anything to anybody all right neil yeah you're fine all right don't worry about it all right i guess you guys are all, right. yeah. all right bye <laughs> yeah even in your sleep uh amy yeah you're 17 Yes. Uh -huh. You're on with a perfect circle, uh, by the way. We're going to hear something off their CD real soon. Go don't ahead. Mind, don't mind us. Well, um, I called um, probably about two to three weeks ago, mm -hmm. and I was the one who, like, could not get off while masturbating. And I have an update. I did, I did, I did. Hey. Oh, great. We'll send you out a T-shirt. <laughs> Whatever. And a box of Kleenex. That's but, right. Um, now I have a problem. <laughs> See, I did it in water. And apparently it worked really well, and I tried it without water. It didn't work, and now I'm kind of worried, like, if I have, like, sex with a female again, like, if I won't be able to do anything because of the water would not be there. If you had sex with a female again? Yeah. Is it your lesbian? Yeah. No, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't pull your file fast enough. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. You know I don't care about our callers. I can't remember. Become a lifeguard. Yeah, why don't you uh, get a job at a water park or something? Well, the thing is, it's kind of hard to hold your breath that long. Well, uh, how long have you been a lesbian? <laughs> um, Details here you're leaving yeah. out. Probably about five years. About five years. Since we're 12. And uh, you have a, do you have a partner now? A, a lesbian partner? Yes, I do. And she performs oral sex on you? Well, no, not yet. We haven't had sex yet. Well, send her down there with a water pick. <laughs> You haven't had oral sex yet? Well, I have before, but not with this certain no. person. Keyword, like, snorkel. What, what use is there uh, being a lesbian if you haven't had oral sex yet? I uh, have, just not with this certain person. Well, how long have you been with her? Well, probably a few weeks. Do, that's it. Do you, is she a lesbian? Uh, yeah. How come you guys haven't... Have you made out? Yeah. Are the bases the same for lesbians? I mean, do you get to second base, you grab a boob, is that the same thing? Yeah, practically, yeah. Uh, With today's technology. Yeah. yeah. I think there's like uh, 11 bases now is the yeah. way. You go uh, two and a half times around yeah, the diamond. With the share now, it's a whole different thing. So, uh, you, you guys, though, uh, here's my point. I bet you would have an orgasm when the time comes that she uh -huh. performs oral sex on you. Oh. Why don't you just assume you will? Agreed. Especially if she's a water sign. Yeah. And then... Uh, and then you can uh, call that. Was that a Pisces? Is that a water sign? What, it makes sense. Many, yeah, what, Aquarius? I don't know. Hey, uh, why don't you uh, call back if you don't have the orgasm after she goes down on you? Okay, I, I will. All right. What'd you do? Get in the bathtub and do that? Yeah, actually, yeah. I was talking to her and she told me that it works so well if you're 
doing it in the bathtub. So I tried it, and now every time yeah. I'm in the bathtub, I get happy. Yeah, but I, I don't think people are talking about just, you know, we, we use your hands in the bathtub? Yeah. No, they're talking about using, like, the spigot or the water, the water, the, the, the actual falling water. No. No. You're just floating in the bathtub? Yeah, I'm just taking a bath. That's not what people were talking about. Wow. But mm -hmm. hey, if it works, fine. There you go. You're one of the lucky ones. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you yeah, have more reason to no problem. Yeah, you'll be fine. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good times. Bye. All right. <laughs> Heather? Yes. Boy, she's just floating in the tub. You're 23. What's up? Um, well, I had a question for Maynard. Uh-oh. Yeah. Um, I decoded the album, and it says on there, La Cascade de Prénom. Nice touch. I want to Hooray. know what that means. La Cascade de Prénom. I don't know. I don't speak French. True. What does that mean? Like it's like a, a waterfall. A water, yeah, a waterfall of whoever, whatever pronoun. First name. Yeah, waterfall yeah. of first names. Yeah. You win a prize. You win a prize. You're the first one, including journalists. Really? You win How do you decode it? Heather? Uh, excuse me? How did you decode it? Oh, well, I, oh, it took a long time because my friend said this is Chinese. I said, no, that's not, you know? So it took me all night. I worked on it. And then the next day I woke up and I thought, you know what? These words on top have to be the names of the song. So I counted them, and there was 13 or whatever, and I don't know, I just worked with it. I think there was, there's one song with uh, three letters in the name of it, and so I used that one. I, I see. Just made a little... Yeah, I'm looking for that, but I don't see it. There's, there's a song with the word, with the uh, number three in it, and there's a four yes, letter. Yes, yes, three Libras. That's how I figured it out. All yes. right. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> yeah, and what are these characters on the uh, front of the, the uh, album? For what is that? I, I have no idea. Maynard Bailey? Um, they're just a font that we created. Really? Wow, it looks pretty official. So she actually was decoded? Buying it. Yeah. A lot of time on her hands. Wow. All right, Heather. Okay. All right, you call us We're back. We're proud of you, Heather. Call us when they get the cable fixed, okay? Thank you for care. Exactly. <laughs> Take some Where's courses in accounting with an eye to the future. Where's the Rosetta Stone that allowed you to do that? <laughs> All right, hold on a second there, uh, Heather. We're going to uh, take ourselves oh, a uh, little break. A perfect Circle is our uh, guest tonight. They got themselves a uh, beautiful new CD out, and we're going to hear something off it when we come back. <laughs> yep, it is the love line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is uh, Dr. Drew uh, over there. Billy and Maynard are both here from a uh, perfect circle. Uh, Maria de Nomes. Did I do Good that? Enough. Right? Good enough. Good enough. That's the name of the uh, new CD. It is uh, out. You can uh, see them uh, tomorrow night at the uh, Pond with uh, Nine Inch Nails and then uh, San Francisco, Portland, Spokane, Sacramento, Salt Lake City, and uh, Denver all coming up in the uh, next couple of weeks, all with uh, Nine Inch Nails. So if you're uh, in any of those cities and you want to see that concert, I suggest you uh, go out and get a ticket soon. We're going to uh, hear something off the uh, new CD. I think we'll take one call and then we'll uh, hear the song, Judith. Steven? Yeah. You're 15? So mayonnaise? What's up? Oh, yeah, it's my rap name. I forgot. That's my main main mayonnaise. Hey, yeah, uh, it's, uh, you helped me out last Snoop Dogg week. called me by my rap name, mayonnaise. Yeah, it's got man A's. Okay. You know, and I'm white. Yeah, because the man showing, because you're the man. Yeah, yeah, I think it's good if I, if I only could rap now, but I'm, I'm working on that. Oh, yeah, that'll happen. Steven, what's going on? <laughs> uh, nothing much. I, I just, first of all, you guys are my heroes, um, and you're part of the reason. When the situation I'm in, uh, there's a guy kind of crazy in my geometry class, and uh, about a month and a half ago, I don't know when it was, he sang north to Alaska. Who, me? Yeah. Yeah. I, he was sleeping, and I uh, crept up on him in geometry, and I sang it real, I said, north to Alaska, you know, like you did? Yeah. And North he, to Alaska, come on, the rush is on. That was me singing. Yeah, that's enough to piss that, off anyone. That's yeah. beautiful. But he woke up, and he jumped up knocked chairs down I started using the F word and everything and he got really crazy and he's just been really weird since then and then Thursday uh, the cops came and took him in fifth period mm. because uh, they heard from someone that he had a hit list to kill people okay. and uh, the cop the on campus cop came to me today and he let me know that I was on it okay and wow yeah so it's a good thing you sung north to Alaska while I was sleeping well it kind of pissed me off and I feel like you know sending a the lyrics to Juvenile Hall. 
But, uh, is that where he is now? Yeah, he's in custody right now. He's okay. not going to come back to the school. I hope they keep him for a while. Is he time. is he a criminal from well, way back? Or? No, he's just a really strange guy. He was talking about uh, natural born killers and how oh, yeah. he had the director's cut and all sorts of weird stuff. Yeah. And he, he had a hit list of uh, people at the school? Yeah, man. One of my good friends were on it, and a couple guys on the football team, along with me, were on it. Jeez. Yeah. Power of music. I, uh, I I remember in high school, people were scared of the jocks. Now it's like the jocks are scared they're going to get uh, shot by a guy in a trench coat. Yeah, I'm scared assless. I mean, I'm you know thinking I'm going to be out there on the football field this summer, and you know he could come back and just. Uh, yeah. Have you talked to your parents about it? I yeah, my mom. Uh, she was. Uh, she said, you know, don't worry about it if they got him in custody. I just uh, my question was is I. I don't know. The first, uh, cause I'm, I'm one of those guys. You know, kind of like you, Adam. I just I. I think oh. everything's a big joke. Uh -huh. And I, I mm. heard a rumor about it on Friday, last Friday, and I thought it was funny. And I was kind of, you know, just joking with my friend about it because we thought we were both going to be on it, but we didn't know because he was just after the next Well, day. why did they release this hit list? How did you find you, out you, about you it? You have to. They, uh, they didn't release it, but some people saw him get taken during... Uh, no, wait a minute. If the police or a psychiatrist becomes aware that he has intention to kill somebody, something called a Tarasov law, where you've got to you've got to notify the people in danger. Yeah, th that's what they did. The cop came today, and he said he had to go around and tell everybody who was on it. It was on it. Wow. But... All right. So, well, you're out of harm's way, thanks to me. Yeah. It's, it's Once a, again, I've saved a young student. So it's a good situation, all right? Because yeah. the guy's in custody. He's under supervision. He'll be on medication, no doubt, when he gets out. And you know to stay the hell away from him. If you see him, just, you know, everybody get down. Just stay away. <laughs> just drop and roll. Because the, the police officer said that he was going to come on uh, the last day of school, which is my final for that class, and he was going to, uh, that was supposedly what he was going to do. So should I, is it okay to go to school that day? Yeah. yeah. You should ask that the, the oh, school provide some supervision. Probably I wouldn't go. But then again, you know, you I, used go to, anyway. <laughs> yeah. I used to miss, I miss like, you know, they have senior ditch day, like uh, it's sort of the end of June or the middle of June when all the seniors just hit the beach uh, after finals or whatever. Uh, I participate in that four years uh, <laughs> running, like ninth, 10th, 11th and 12th grade. Actually, every day was senior ditch day when I was a uh, senior. But uh, yeah, I wasn't much of a student. For a song. Drew, you want to hear a song? Yeah. All right. This is from uh, Perfect Circle and this is called Judith. Oh, yes. That's from the uh, a Perfect Circle Live at Budokan. <laughs> Miranda Gnomes is the name of the uh, CD. That was uh, Judith, just uh, one of the good songs uh, on the CD. And we'll hear another good song uh, in the next hour. Let's uh, hop back uh, onto the phones. Drew, we've had horrible calls tonight. Do you notice that? Hmm. Yeah. Chris? Weird energy. Yeah. yeah. Chris, you're 15. Yeah. You got a rash in your penis for two weeks? Yeah. Have you been with a woman? Uh, yeah, about three three weeks ago, I went to this party, and I had sex with this girl. Well, everybody says I had sex with this girl. I see. And I don't remember if I used a condom or not, and yeah. I just wanted to know if it could be an STD. Yeah, you had sex with an unprotected, possibly with a new partner, sure. Absolutely. All right, so go get checked out. Got to be checked. I'm going to start burning through some of these. Austin? Oh, um, yeah. You're 17. You're on with the perfect circle, by the way. Oh, that's right. Um, well, you see, I um, got my girlfriend pregnant, and... Um, she wants to uh, have an abortion, and um, I don't want her to. And uh, do I have any rights? Are you, you know, right. her to you'd rather her? you'd rather her have the child and then you leave her? Um, no, no, I don't want to leave her at all. I, she can leave the child. I want the child. I, I don't want the child to get killed. How about the child up for adoption for some? Fine with me. All right. Is that all right? Um, yeah. One other thing. Yeah, maybe um, she can do that. One other thing. Yeah. Um, can I ask Maynard something? Sure. Um, hey Maynard, ask me if I'm a tree. Oh, his mic's on. Oh, turn his yeah. mic on, Anderson. Thanks. Um, yeah. <laughs> he wants to know if you're a tree. I, I'm repeating it for Maynard. He's tired. Are you okay. a tree? Um, no. Uh, okay, Austin. Thanks great. for that, all right, buddy? Yeah, it's great. Thanks. All right. Drew, here's what we've got. Here's what we wow. always get burned on with this show. Oh. The uh, Hop, hop, hop. One more. Yeah, yeah. One more thing. It's always, uh, it's always the one that gets you. Yeah. It's never a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Paul? How about one less? Paul? Yes. You're 23. Yeah. All okay. Right. All right. Now, this is going to be good. Yes. You caught your wife in bed with a 15-year-old? Yep. All right. That is All good. 15-year-old right. what? Okay. Uh, well, boy. 15-year-old um, boy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What happened was it was a typical come home early from work, you know, All right. Hold on, Paul. We're going to take a little break. 
Okay. All right. Listen, one thing I've learned from this show, once you establish a schedule and you're married, stay on it. Don't ever break and come home early because uh, there's going to be a clown raping your wife in the living room. <laughs> Rodeo clown? <laughs> Rodeo clown, circus clown, there's many different kinds of clowns, but rest assured one of them is going to be on your wife in the living room. The the day, yeah, you, you can't even come home from work 10 minutes early without finding your wife in some sort of compromising position. So just don't do it. Hey, if you get cut off work early, go to the batting cage, see a movie, or just drive in a circle around your block, but do not enter that house. A perfect circle. Oh, very nice, Drew. Oh my. And uh, because of that segue, we'll be uh, back with the perfect circle, and uh, Paula found the 15-year-old and his wife after this. Yep, it is Loveline. I'm Adam Corolla. It's uh, Dr. Drew. A perfect circle, sir, I guess, tonight. we got uh, Billy Maynard both in here from the band. They will uh, beat the Anaheim Pond tomorrow night with uh, Nine Inch Nails and then uh, down the coast and then uh, back toward uh, Sacramento, Salt Lake City and uh, Denver. And uh, Amy Mann is going to be in here uh, tomorrow night, who's uh, oh, cool. someone who's real good, who I've always uh, appreciated and uh, never met. So uh, we'll talk to her tomorrow night. Very you know who Amy Mann is? No. Okay, good times. Paul? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice touch. You're uh, 23. Isn't she married to uh, Michael Penn? Is that? Sure. Yes. Okay. Paul? Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're uh, 23. You came home from work early. Yeah, I came home from work early. I uh, went in the house as normal. Yeah. Uh, started heading for the bedroom because she wasn't out in the living room. And um, peeked around the hallway there, and she's giving this 15-year-old a BJ. Mm-hmm. Well. And, I mean, yeah. you know, it's like, of course, you know, you walk up and, you know, well, what the hell's going on? Yes. And, you know, so it's like, you know, we had a big old fight ensued. and. What did he do? He got back uh, on his uh, bike and rode away? Or <laughs> he ran big away. Big wheel? What was he on? On foot or on big wheel? On foot. <laughs> no, it wasn't on a pogo stick or a hopperoo or anything? No. Nah, but, hop. Um, and, huh? Yeah, and who was this kid? Uh, my brother. No. Yeah. Really? Yep. Oh, hold on a second. I've got to discuss this with my <sighs> mate. Do we believe this guy? Um, no. Why did he include that in the story in the first place? The brother part? Yeah, yeah, I mean, why, why didn't he say that just, at the top? Why didn't he just say it's my brother? The 15-year-old part is... Because that was the deep. kicker. The fifteen-year-old was the kicker. Yeah. On the other, on the other hand, why would he have improvised the brother? Do you know what I mean? Seemed like it was a pretty outlandish call. I think he's a porno writer and just uh, where his test audience. He's trying to check it out. What the hell line was he on, Drew? Three. All right. Hold on. Let's try this again, Paul. Okay. Why didn't you come forward with the brother information at the top of the story? Because it is so embarrassing, you guys can't even begin to imagine. Okay. So you, you, you okay. All right. All right. I'll buy that. Yeah. And what's up with your wife? Because this is really going to help us believe this. How old is your wife? Uh, she will be 29 oh. here in a few days. But what's up with her? What? Yeah, she an alcoholic? 60 milligrams of Prozac a day. Mm -hmm. What's her history? Though? What, what, what made her this way? Um, she maintains its work. Um, <laughs> she's... Uh, is she uh, she work at a daycare center or what do you mean no, work? She she don't work no longer. Uh, I see. I'd rather not say what she did. What kind of work did she do? Uh, it was entertainment. Work, no, uh, uh, well, it was either she was a field. Oh, okay. But um, nurse Adam. Nurse. But no, right? her history is um, you know, it's like her dad died when she was six. Yeah. You know, she went through her teenage years as an addict. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. She, All right. She, she's out. She's out now again too. I bet you. You know, I don't know. Oh yeah. All right. Yeah. No boy. And what's up with your uh, kid brother? If, you know, if he thought you got he got a good ass kicking for running over a skateboard. Uh, well, yeah. I cut him a lot of slack. This is really going to do it. What's that? Had, I cut him a lot of slack because he was drunk. He was drunk. Yeah, she got him drunk. He's fifteen. Oh boy. Hey, well, uh, she should be in jail. No kidding. Uh. Okay. Listen, uh, you, you don't have any kids, do you? Yeah, we do. Ooh, how many? One. All right. Listen, um, take him out to the desert and just drop him off. He'll have a better chance. Who's You're prescribing really the Prozac? Huh? Who's just prescribing? Drop, just drop him off, off in the, the desert. desert. <laughs> just uh, go halfway to Vegas and throw him out of the car, and he'll have a better chance of uh, uh, having, having a good childhood. Unacceptable. <laughs> Raised uh, by a dingo and a turtle. But, well, my main question is, is she keeps, you know, saying, you know, well, we can work this out, we can work this out. And it's like, I don't know how to get across. No, we can't. Mm, yeah. Hey, well, listen, Paul, you married a piece of work. 
No kidding. Uh, yeah, and and you're, sell her on eBay. You're gonna have to. Uh, you're gonna have to look into that. I mean, why you did that? Why you married such a piece of work? You know what I'm saying? Right. And uh, maybe not for this, but in the future, don't turn the whole thing on her. All of you people that get hooked up with maniacs and uh, people that act out and you know uh, people are abusing substance and stuff figure you married them so you have to take some responsibility for it and right. look into it so you don't marry another one in the meantime uh, i wouldn't blame you for breaking things off i do worry about your kid oh, yeah i right. bet you uh... in light of what's happened the uh, court might award you custody mm -hmm. Right. And uh, maybe your best situation, you, you know, you may just have to cut your losses, get a divorce, and uh, raise your kid as best you can. And she, need, she needs a lot of help. Who's prescribing the Prozac? Uh, her psychiatrist. Okay. Well, have you tried calling the psychiatrist and uh, discussing what's happened? Well, I haven't. I'm going to see a, a, psych, a psychiatrist myself. Good. And, um, I mean, it's just... I. I'm going get, like insane with this. I bet. Yeah. Get releases from each other so each other's psychiatrists can talk to one another so you can, they can help you try to figure out how to deal with this. And uh, what uh, what do you do for a living? Uh, I'm in transport. I see. All right, that narrows it down. The hospital transport. I see. She's a nurse. She's a hospital transport. I see. Ambulance. Uh, not really. All right. Well, anyway, hey, Paul. Yeah. Listen, uh, I'd go ahead and get that divorce. I'd uh, look out for my child, number one. Right. And uh, you're going to have to try to do something with your uh, kid brother because uh, he's on a collision course himself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. So what, like get him in therapy? or? Uh, you, no. you, you know, you may just have to like sit down and talk to him and just sort of, uh, you know, offer it's up the peace pipe with him or possibly something. Possibly also bring, it, bring him into this therapeutic environment you're going to be creating. He's going to mm -hmm. be seeing somebody. So. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right, but so you're, you're going to have caretakers. You got to you got to reflect with them on all these issues. I, I'm sorry, Paul, but you know what? You marry a crazy woman, and this is the kind of ass that happens. Well, she wasn't she wasn't crazy, you know, to begin with. Yeah. I think she's out. I think she's using. You think she's out yeah, using? Yeah, it? yeah, I do. This is that behavior. If she's not, she. <laughs> I she hope wasn't she's, then she is now. I really hope she's using, Paul, because if she's not using, I want to know what she's doing when she goes out. Yeah. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. All right, Paul. Listen, just get a divorce. That sounds about right. And uh, take care of your kid, please. All right, thanks a lot. All right, take Good care of yourself. Oh, poor Paul. But listen, don't have kids with crazy people, all of you. <laughs> please, you're ruining the world. All you people that are reproducing with effed up people, that's what's ruining the world. Drew and his triplets, not worried about. His wife, the jury's still out on. But the triplets are being raised by the au pair, and they're doing fine. Right, Drew? My wife's raising the triplets. Oh, she is? Yeah. Oh, and, they're, and they're fine. Notably. Who's raising the au pair? <laughs> The point is, is it, it, all you sane together people who want to have kids, hey, have as many as you like. Have a goddamn country. I don't care. But you effed up people. I mean, what chance does this kid have being raised by uh, this kind of mama? Of course the kid's going to be effed up. And if you don't think that kid's going to be effed up, I, let's check into what this chick's mom was like. Mm -hmm. What do you think her mom and daddy were like? You know what I'm saying? Nightmares. I, I'm sure of it. All right. Brad? Yes. You're 16. Um, yes, uh, for once, I'd just like to say that you guys are the greatest. I love both of you. You're my role models, and, uh, I'd just like to say that. And, um... Thanks. You talking about me and Drew or Billy and Maynard? Oh, you and Drew. I'm sorry. All right. That's all right. Even no, that's fine with me. I've been trying to call you guys forever. I thought, starting to think that maybe your calls were fake. And, um, and, uh, I just want to say one thing before I get to my question. You know how you're always bringing up things from old TV shows that they never do anymore? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That uh, thing that they, how they keep screwing up the, some guy's name, and then at the end of the show, that guy, he says his own name wrong. No. Uh, no. No. Uh, I do know what you mean when uh, they start screwing up a name, and yeah. they get going, and the guy screws it up, too. Yeah. It's not necessarily at the end. Yeah, that's good, but not great. It's not uh, even good. Uh, what's wrong, Brad? What's the question? Sorry. Um, I was just wondering <coughs> if uh, methamphetamine is the same thing as Ritalin. Yes. And um, methylphenidate, yeah. And is that uh, bad to mix with a uh, pot? No, it's not good. It's recommended. It's not recommended. <laughs> it's not I <laughs> just heard uh, C. Everett Coop talking about it uh, last week on uh, KC. Do you have ADD? <laughs> um, I used to. And is there addiction in your family? Um, yeah. You smoke a lot of pot? No, not really. All right. Well, you got to smoke a certain amount to come up with those sort of lame uh, TV show. <laughs> Analogies. You got a little bit of a laugh going too. Oh, sorry. Brad. No, no. I mean the pot. Uh, I know. I was talking to Adam. 
All right. All right, so don't, you smoke don't... A, you smoke a fair amount, huh? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Don't yeah. mix them. Hey, Brad, uh, you're 16, right? You right. worship me. You look at me as a god, right? Yeah. And, and I and, go to junior college, too. Already? Yeah. Ooh, that's... Now, that's... At 16? Yeah. That, that's okay, isn't it? Yeah. What happened? I don't know. I'm one of those little nerdy kids, I guess. Wow. All right. Listen, don't screw yourself up with uh, all the drugs and stuff. Wait till oh. your brain dries, all right? That, that ADD dry at 18. There's probably the addictive gene there. The ADD and addiction go together very tightly, and so be careful. Really? Yeah, be very all careful. Right. All right. Here's the deal, everybody. Um, before 18, leave your brain alone. After 18, yeah, smoke pot and hit yourself on the head with a bowling pin and drop acid. It's, it's fine with me. Just let your brain dry. Just wait. Just yeah. Hurry. yeah, just Any wait. Time. Plenty of time. Listen. I didn't start effing myself up until recently. Uh, enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't become a, a, a boozer or a drug addict or anything until just recently. Yeah, most yeah. of my friends in high school that were drinking in high school uh, have a problem with it now. Right. right. Save yourself. I'm not going to have a problem until I'm in my 40s. Right, Drew? Good times. All right. We'll be back. Yep, it is Love Line. I'm Adam Carroll. That is uh, Dr. Drew over there. Perfect Circles, our uh, guest tonight. Billy Howard Ellis here and uh, Maynard from uh, Tool and uh, and uh, Perfect Circle. We're going to hear something else uh, off the new CD in uh, just a little bit. And until then, we'll uh, hop back on the phone. Melissa? Yes. You're 20? Yes. Can I be 21? You're going to be 21? Uh-huh. Let me write that down. Let's see, 20, then 21? <laughs> yeah. Okay. See, that's interesting, because I, uh, I went from 20 to 22, and then I went back to 21, and then I went to 23, and then oh. since then I've been on. I see. That's yeah. pretty average. That's yeah, I screwed myself, though, because I couldn't buy beer for an extra year. I didn't think that went out. That was your mom's idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Melissa, what's up? Okay, well, I've been with my boyfriend for over three and a half years, mm -hmm. and we're, like, very sexually active, but I, I haven't had an orgasm yet. I see. Well, maybe when you're 21. No. Oh. And like, okay, this is the thing that like, I've, it's like really weird because I... Hold on, I, I gotta say something. Uh, w does he perform oral sex on you? Uh, a lot, uh-huh. A lot? Yeah. Yeah. Why? Pops. Yeah. Boy. And each time he rolls that uh, oral sex dice, it's uh, snake eyes, huh? Yeah, but... Yeah. God bless him, though. He keeps going back to the well. Pardon the pun. <laughs> And, uh, well, and do, well. do you get close? Yeah. No, I don't. No. Do you ever fake one for her? <laughs> no, I've told him that I haven't had one. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I've told him, well, I don't think I have, because I'm not sure. Like, I don't know how it's supposed to feel. So desire for sex, yet disconnected. Hello? Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, but with uh, Maynard there. I think, like, I don't know, like, the other, like, I had a, I had a full body massage. And I really do think that I had one while I was getting a massage. Sure. I mean, I don't know how it's supposed to like, it was this weird... Massage with a happy down, ending. Down yeah. to my feet. <clears throat> did, uh, was it a guy doing the massage? It was a girl. And what did she do? She was just doing the normal full body massage and like, I felt like screaming and like kicking. <laughs> but like, I just like took my foot off the pillow where I was lying, you know? Yeah. And I didn't know what to do. I was like, I was going to freak out. I felt like screaming. Really? And she didn't touch any of your private parts no, or no, anything? No, no, it's not like, no. I see. This is but another, I think that's the way it's supposed to feel. Yeah, no, that's it. This is another wonder of the woman, right? Right. She can't, she has sex regularly, can't orgasm, but the uh, massage. Sweaty guy in her banging away fruitlessly for three and a half years, <laughs> and uh, she goes down to the corner and some chick gets her off by uh, rubbing her neck. Yeah. No, but it's not just... <laughs> and burning a little incense. Yep. Well, today I went back to get another uh, massage, and it was a man, and I had the same feeling. Really? Yeah. All right. Why don't you have your boyfriend do what these guys do? No, it's not that. It's just like, I don't know what's wrong with him, I mean, or oh. with me, or what. Ooh, Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, that, 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 that hurt. I, I felt that. Yeah, three and a half years. So maybe you're not in love. I, but I, but I am, I mean. No, really? I think I am. No. Yeah, I mean, I haven't, we have, we're still together. <laughs> oh, that qualifies yeah, as love. You're too lazy to break up, that's why. So people that are sharing a jail cell are in love? Yes, that's <laughs> that's very true. In ways. Yeah. Uh, what do you suggest? Do you think, like... I, I think you're done with this guy. 
You really think so? Yeah, and I, and I think you think you're done with them, too, on some level. But you just sort of, you're nice and you got into this routine. Sometimes I feel like it's because I'm used to him. Well, I'm used to the relationship. You've had him since you were, you've been his, you've been his girlfriend since you were 17. Since I was 17. Yeah, you don't know anything else. And it's really normal for people to kind of go on from there and have other relationships. Yeah. And your body's telling you something, and you're telling us something, even though you don't realize you are, that this may, may be time for this. And that's okay. It's healthy. It's normal. All right. Okay, well, thank you. All right. Bye. All right. Let's see. Well, have fun there. Wow. Yeah, women are great. Women can have uh, orgasms driving a driving a manual shift or uh, and a piece of uh, workout apparatus at the gym or getting a full body massage. But I know if we've heard of that vivid a, a description of, of that difference where they're having lots of sex, lots of oral sex, nothing happens. She has a neck massage, pow. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, I've had an orgasm that's during not, a That's massage. not like some kind of indication of some kind of something physical, uh, early age, kind of disconnected. No, that's, it, it means she's not in love. Adam's right. And okay. women, when they can get to that sort of place emotionally, right. it all just happens. Okay. And so she's more apt to get there in a quiet moment, you know, with the new age music going, having a massage, <laughs> than with her boyfriend who makes her frustrated and contain, you know, keeps her sort of stuck in this developmental stage that she wants to break out of. Guys are the exact opposite. They could have a woman they're madly in love with give them a rub down and have nothing, yeah. or they could get a hummer from the guy who killed their family <laughs> and squeeze one off. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Easily done. Yeah, think about that. It's great being a guy. It's so think easy. It's all so mechanical. Simple beasts. Think yeah. Different when women are. And we, they're the same. Excuse me. They're the same. Yeah. Well, if you read Cosmo, you'll think they're the same, but uh, absolutely not. Courtney? Yeah. We're, uh, you're 16. What's up? Yeah. Hi. First, I want to say hi to you, Manager and Billy. You guys are, like, awesome. I loved your new album, and I saw you guys in San Diego this Saturday, and it was amazing. Anyways, my question is, um, I want to know if ecstasy would show up on a drug test, and if so, how long before it disappears from your body? It's out pretty quick, certainly within about 8 to 12 hours. Oh, really? And um, I would think most routine urine screens would not specifically have MDMA on it. Oh, okay. It, it, some do, but I don't think most routine ones would. Where are you working, Walmart? No, I'm, I'm thinking about getting a job soon, though. And, by, by the way, one of the reasons people don't usually put ecstasy on the screens for regular screening is that people... Uh, it's very difficult to use ecstasy that regularly. Mm -hmm. well, are you, people are getting into it now. That's my point, though. Are you using it every day or a couple times a week? No, I haven't done it before, but I have it right, right. now. Okay. You have the ecstasy? Yeah. But you've never done it before? Yeah. You're just thinking about doing it? Yeah. And thinking about getting a job? Yeah. Well, why don't you fill that application out and take that urine test and then trip on the ecstasy? <laughs> Good point. Yeah, possibly on the way home from Good the interview. Math. All right. Nice planning. Uh, yeah. Okay, All right, Courtney. I love you guys. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Uh, do they do drug tests on every job now or most jobs? Or I had to do one to get in here. I don't know. I get really? it to the whole van. Yeah. We, uh, after, uh, who's the band we had that experience with, uh, drug, with the drug testing? Well, after Black, the Black, Black Grape, Grape in yeah. incident uh, many years ago, I think we, we installed a metal detector. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that was uh, <laughs> true. That's your favorite band, Pennywise. Yeah, mm -hmm. after oh Pennywise, God. we had a metal detector put in. Josh's favorite, Jonathan. Yeah, you're uh, 22. What's up? Hi. Um, my question is for Maynard. Huh. Um, I saw your show over the weekend in San Diego, and I noticed during the song "Thinking of You," you were getting a little physical um, in your pants, and I was wondering what what you oh, were wow. thinking about while you were masturbating in front of thousands of people oddly enough you really yep no. we we're just talking about it during the break oh well i am honored yeah mm -hmm. all right now you can masturbate to uh, maynard masturbating to you i will do that tonight all right cool good times all right. fantastic <laughs> uh, all right well a lot of people saw you guys in san diego kevin yeah you're 21 yes what's up uh not much first maynard billy saw you guys in chicago you were great love the cd thanks thank you um my girlfriend of two years told me she thinks she's bisexual. Mm hmm And what led her to that conclusion? Um, she's been thinking about it for, like, she said up to four years. Mm hmm, mm -hmm. She's just, lately it's becoming more and more she's finding women attractive. Mm hmm mm hmm To me, it sounds like she's done with the relationship. You think? 
Yes. Yeah. Usually when there's declarations made, such as uh, I'd like to see other people, or I want to find myself, or I need some me time, or well, I'm bisexual, or I, you know, all pottery. This, I'm gay. Yeah, they take up. She doesn't want to act on it. Well, what is, why she she's going to do this incrementally. Yeah. This is, the this is the first step, right? I mean, does she think you're going to be hurt by it? No. She just, we're very open and very honest with each other, so. Yeah, why did she tell you this? I could tell she had something on her mind, and I kind of drug it out of her. Oh, no. 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 And if it's been on her mind for four years, why suddenly is it preoccupying her? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, Kevin? Yeah. This is uh, good news and bad news. The good news is uh, you get one threesome. <laughs> the bad news is you, go, you guys are going to break up pretty soon. Okay. All right. So All right. film it. All right. Good times. All right. You know, they, they will have a, uh, you know, it, the good news for guys is women who are lesbian but don't want to admit it will have a threesome yeah. just to get to the chick. And we get that all the time. They want to be with a woman, but they don't want to sort of admit that they want to be just with a woman, so they do it under the auspices of a threesome. Yeah. Meanwhile, they're with the chick the whole time, but who cares if you're the guy? <laughs> but then that's it. When, 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 when your girlfriend tells you she thinks she's bisexual, she's saying, we're going to break up pretty soon. Aaron? Yes. You're 21. What's up? Here's my situation. First of all, I'd like to say, Maynard, you're a gigantic inspiration. I love all your music since day one. I've been a huge fan. Thank you. Also, on the Purpose Trick album, great work. Uh, congratulations on all the success for that. And Maynard, also, congratulations on the final closing of the court case, not the whole label crap. Yeah. Anyways, uh, here's my problem. Over the past two years or so, um, just like half men in the world, I've begin to get into a habit of masturbating, you know, but probably before I go to bed. Um, here's my problem mm -hmm. being... I do the same thing if I take three naps a day, so it starts, to, it starts oh. to add up, you know what I'm saying? One between her? Yeah. Okay, well, anyways, here's... Basically, when it comes to me having sex with my girlfriend or whatever, and then I basically kind of go on autopilot, and after I kind of reach that area, I think my body's getting used to, you know, achieving orgasm and then going to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Which is causing a bit of a problem. Yeah. I wonder if that's normal. Uh, can you have sex? You know, here's the thing. Have sex uh, late at night. Yeah, see, that'd be great. And she'll want to go to bed, too. Exactly. Uh, another one of God's uh, treats is it pertains to the man and the woman. Women get sort of awakened and stimulated after sex. Right. Males go to sleep. So. <laughs> right. Well, our work is done. So we'll set the alarm for early in the morning. Exactly. She gets up to make <laughs> breakfast, and you sleep in a little. Yeah. Uh, and what were you talking about with pornography up here? There's something uh, on the... Uh, screen that says uh when enough oh, she got kind of mixed up oh i, I was see just saying that basically being kind of a, um, almost addicted to that pornography uh, uh, yeah yeah see yeah. i think i think there's a problem with your intimacy you're you're detached from the relationship you're you're sort of more into porno and <laughs> sort of getting off and going to sleep than you are connecting yeah, yeah, any i think kind. that's i think that's happened due to the fact of all you know doing this for like four years straight no the, the yeah. behaviors certainly uh, sort of add to it or give the momentum away from real connection, but there's sort of a reason that you have trouble with intimacy. Mm -hmm. Actually, yeah, well, it's probably true. All right. I haven't had a problem, though, I mean, not to promote drug use of anything, but being on certain drugs have absolutely helped. I've lasted longer, I've been able to go longer, um, maybe like marijuana type thing, or maybe even some types of alcohol, or... Yeah, you know, but, like but she's not worried about you going longer, she's worried about you being available in a real way, which I mean, you are she not. She liked it. She liked what she gets, I mean, All right. honestly. Well, then what's the problem? Uh, not much. I just like to last longer, you know. That's basically my problem. I and mean, I can I can draw it out, but after that first shot, usually it's done, you know. Yeah. So well, I, join the club, jackass. I know. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> All these twenty-one-year-olds going. I'm only good for three orgasms. If we could figure that out, we would have. Yeah. Exactly. That's fine. You do one, you go to bed. Great sense. Yep. All right. All right. She's not gonna be happy with that, Don. Not with none of stoner Aaron. You know, I, my uh, my penis is that of a uh, thirty six year old, but my I still have a seventeen year old brain, and my brain says, halfway into the sex, I'm going for two. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> tonight I go for two. One is not enough. Definitely two. I know I always say two, but tonight I mean two. Yeah. And then it's like, Christ, I got to sit down. <laughs> I think I pulled something. <laughs> All right. Make a sandwich. Yeah, I got to make a sandwich. I got to think this whole two thing 36. out. I turned 36 uh, a couple of days back, and uh, the, the days of the uh, hat trick and the, uh, the twin jobs are uh, long gone. Long I just, gone. I just turned 36 in April. Yeah. Yeah, you look good. 
I don't look as good. Oh, you look just fine. Huh? You turn in April, too, right? No, I turn into May. In a minute, right. Hey, weren't you going to get me a I'm hot getting, lather? I'm, I swear to God, I'm going to be a don't wait. What, uh, when? For Christmas? Yeah, for Christmas time. I'm going to get Jesus it. Christ, I told you I wanted one of those hot lather dispensers. I'm invest in? Invest I, investigating? Yeah. For for month and a half to get a $29 item from the Save-Ons? How do you know they haven't saved How dare you? Can't find a save on. Send one of your lackeys from drdrew.com down to the Save-On and get me one of my uh, hot shaver dispenser things, would you please? It's a great idea. It's, it's, it's humiliating for me to bug you for my gift each and every night. Claire? Hi, Adam. You're 20. What's up? Yeah. Um, oh, I love the man show, by the way. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Well, I, okay. I think I may have had a miscarriage. Um, my menstrual cycle is very, very regular, and it has been ever since I was 14. And um, not to get too graphic, I guess, it ended on about the 27th, and on the 1st, it started again, but very, very heavy kind of clumpy sounds gross but yeah um and i just i was talking to one of my friends and she said oh you had a miscarriage and it really scared me and i don't know if i should tell my boyfriend or have you been having unprotected sex no no we've been using condoms and to my knowledge it didn't break or anything but mm. i i'm yet to find birth control that doesn't make me sick to my stomach mm. and so hmm yeah you think that was a miscarriage drew Three days after your period? Yeah. No. No? I don't see how. When did you have sex last before then? Oh, constantly. Oh, I we see. We moved in together. I see. So that's it. Game on. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't make sense unless there was Why? Because why beginning. would you have your period then if you were pregnant? That, well, that's what I thought. And then, they, and then um, she also told me that you can still have your first one. She's had a baby already. I see. Yeah, but it's not really having your period. Though. Well, then what is it? Yeah. I, I don't think it was a miscarriage. I, you could have a very cyst. You could have endometriosis. It could be a lot of different things. It could the, be nothing. The good news is you didn't have a miscarriage. The bad news is you're dying. Okay. Okay. Okay, great. No, Thanks for calling. It doesn't, okay, it doesn't just... You. I mean, it's possible, but it just doesn't fit. Well, what should she do? Should she go to the gynecologist? I, I would do nothing at this point. Nothing? Yeah. All right. Is do it nothing. Is it too late for me to go to a doctor? Could they still tell me what's gone on? They might be able to. If, if they find something, they, then they'll be able to equate it with that. Hey, but, Claire? Yeah? But why why are you uh, consumed with this? I mean, you want to know whether to tell your boyfriend, you know... Is there something that's going to freak out guys if I say, Hey, guess what, hon? I had a miscarriage. I, well, what, how do you say that? I know. I'm asking... I'm not saying how do you say it. I'm asking why do you say it? Why get into it? Yeah, why get into it? it, it you're, Is there something he needs to know? Why? What, does he want to name the clot? Oh. 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 <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, what what, what possible reason would he need to know? Unless you're looking for something. Well, I'm having a hard time with the thought of it, if that's what it is. You know, most, it, most pregnancies end in miscarriage. Yes. M uh, my, uh... You, you ended yeah, in miscarriage. Yeah, I ended in miscarriage, yeah. actually. <laughs> that's what happened. But that's, that's going to be something that may well happen to you. The probability is you'll have something like that. I mean, well, here's the my... The thing is, it's, it's right. emotional. It's, it's a hard uh, thing to... I, I know, but it, that that's it looks like you're looking for that. You're manufacturing that. Ooh. It's like you're a veteran of a war that never took place. I'll write that down, Drew. That was pretty heavy. So you're saying I'm looking for attention? <laughs> no, no, we don't know what you're doing it for. But you, but the point is, it's, it, it probably didn't happen. Why make a big case out of it? Okay. Right. Why freak yourself out and freak your boyfriend out and everything? Just, um, you know, stuff goes on down there. And the hell knows. I've had a regular period. That's one of the reason we get to. I mean, it could be thyroid condition. It could be a lot of different things. And it's worthwhile getting that evaluated since it's such a change for you. But way down the list, I would think it would be miscarriage. Okay, good. All okay. right, so no miscarriage. Don't tell your boyfriend. Thank you. All right. All right. Keep using those uh, condoms. Uh, Steve? Hey, what's up, you guys? First you, off, uh, I'd like to say Billy and Maynard, you, your show last night was just incredible. Your music has uh, really enriched my life. Just like to say thanks. Thank you. All right. <laughs> And, uh, well, my question is, uh, I've been dating this girl for about a year now, and at first everything was cool, but as soon as, like, we started becoming sexually active, uh, I noticed that, like, I started off really subtly, but she sort of likes to, like, simulate, like, a, like, date rape type, type thing. Like, she'll say, you know, stop, you know, no stop, and if I do, then she'll get all pissed off. And it was really bothering me for a while, and I told her that, and she stopped, but now she, she, like, seems really bored during sex and she sort of complains about it and stuff and i was just wondering what what you thought about that if that was normal does she articulate no it's not normal does she articulate what it is she's needing from you 
Well, uh, I guess not directly, not verbally, but sort of implicit messages I'm getting from her are sort of, you know, she's, she's implying that she wants what we were doing before. Uh, explain to us again what that is. Well, she wants a little simulated uh, rape. Well, yeah, she'll try and push me off of her and stuff. Yeah. And uh, if I stop, she'll just completely be like, yeah. you aren't getting it, yeah. you know. Listen, Steve, every chick I'm with does that. They don't mean it. <laughs> you give them another wine cooler, they're fine. Oh Seriously, uh, if I listened every time, you know, I mean, if I had a, if a dime for every time someone said, get off me, you smell, well, I don't want to be here. What's that? Yes, Steve? Yeah. You know what? This isn't uh, normal, but yet it's, it's, um, it's something that happens a lot. We hear about it all the time. Okay. And it, it means something. It does mean we something. We have to talk to her to know what it means. And usually what it means is something happened. Rough. At some point. Tell us her first that she ever had sex. No, not that's no sexual abuse. Uh, outside of the family. More, more, no, more like physical abuse. That's okay, kind of I understand. So should was I, there, was there, of, should I encourage that type of behavior? <clears throat> was her dad a rough guy? Uh, I don't like him. Nobody did he whack her a few times. I'm asking if you're going to date him. It, yeah, as far, I think that he probably like very lightly might have physically abused. Him. All right, well that's where that comes from. Yeah, typically. I mean, Daddy was. That's the pattern we see all the time. Right. Anyway. Daddy was a little bit abusive, and now you're. Your daddy. I see. That's all right. Being daddy, though. I know it's kind of weird, but on the other hand, I don't know. Aren't sort of all bets off once you hit the bedroom? I suppose. And, and, and it's a consensus. And it's consensual. It's consensual. And, and, and she's telling you she wants. It, it's it's a fetish, slightly. And in other words, it's taking away from the intimacy somewhat. On the other hand, everybody has a kind of preferences. Right. Actually, and this isn't one that's he, way outside the box in terms of taking the intimacy completely away. Although he is feeling somewhat objectified and detached from the experience, which yeah, is well, what a fetish is supposed to do. Yeah, but listen, I sort of think, let me ask uh, Billy and Maynard this, yeah. as a guy, aren't you just supposed to sort of dive in and do what they dig because you're getting laid anyway you slice it? <laughs> well, you know, if, if, it's, if, it, if it's a conscious effort on both people and they're conscious of where each other are at and, mm -hmm. and exploring that, it can, it can be somewhat, it, it can be intimate. I think if you're if you're but if you're conscious of the act that you're embarking on, right? And exploring. And, and if, you, if you need it to like like he said, if you if if you need it to get off. Well, I think he's kind of he's getting the creeps because it's feeling a little weird to him. But uh, I think he ought to just sort of dive in and go with it. I mean, did someone you know have this happen to him? Does someone you know get raped? I mean, it could be a, a very sensitive issue for you. That's you know you don't even want to get close to. Steve, do you have any experience with this? Uh, not directly, not for myself. I see. You were never raped? I was never raped, now. I see. You don't have a uh, sister or aunt or something like that? I suppose uh, everyone knows someone who's been raped. I, I, I guess I have some direct experience with it, but... Yeah. I mean, certainly just a movie itself could trigger emotions that would make that such a taboo thing that you don't even want to go there. Yeah. Make... Even uh, Rape the Musical could, uh, <laughs> could trigger that. Did you guys, guys go on DVD. You see that? I saw it live. I didn't see that movie. You didn't see the movie? Oh, you saw it down Broadway? Yeah. Yeah, I wish I would have... <laughs> Let's see, Ben Vereen. I was, was in the first there. one. Nice. <laughs> Drew, did you, did you uh, rape the musical in uh, high school? No, I think it was Rant we did. Oh, you did Rant? Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah, a little twist on the uh, rape the musical. Yeah. All right. We're going to take ourselves a little break. A perfect uh, circle is here. We will hear something off the uh, CD when we come back. <laughs> yep. It is, uh... That's Pennywise, right? Yes. There you go. Nice. Touch. Perfect Circle is uh, the band's here tonight. Billy and uh, Maynard are both here. We're going to hear something off the uh, new CD. We'll, uh, we'll take one call. Talk to uh, Prada, who's uh, oh, 26. Okay. Oh, boy. Yeah, sure. Oh, 26. Prada? Hi. Uh, hi. I, wa I wanted to talk to you guys about my boyfriend and I, Ed. Um... Anyways, we've been together for the last three years, and he's really into, um, about four months ago, we decided to try a strap-on in our relationship to spice it up, and now he won't have sex with me any other way. He only likes it up the butt, and he says he's not gay, and I love him so much, and I don't know what to do, and he's in the car with me, and we need to figure out how to work through this. I see. Anna, did you pick up your sandals in Phoenix or not? I, I, I have a suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> you guys obviously know Prada. Uh, wait, she Can we talk to Gucci? Is, is Gucci on the line? Is she a stripper you met on the road? <laughs> no, she's only the uh, mother of my son. Oh, nice my touch. God, I'm going nice, to hell. Nice touch. <laughs> really? 
<laughs> now, I'm guessing the mother of your son would be uh, your ex-girlfriend or ex-wife? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You guys get along okay? Yeah, yeah obviously. She's well, listen to that bitter a hard time on the road. Home. Yeah, but that's, uh, uh, I mean, what, what's the situation? You have uh, joint custody and all that stuff? Yeah. And uh, you uh, you see him, like, yeah, weekends or whatever? Uh, whenever I can. I'll tell you, I, I, uh, I, uh, I grew up, well, actually, I'm not a good example of that, but uh, my parents divorced when I was, like, seven, and I was, like, Monday, Wednesday, Friday with Mom and uh, the rest of the days with Dad. And, uh, yeah. It was confusing? No, I didn't like either one of them, actually, but... Uh, <laughs> It was, uh, <laughs> but, you know, it wasn't, I, I didn't, you know, as is, is, is hard as uh, it is for Drew to believe, I, it didn't F me up that much. You're so detached, you're feeling, how the hell would you know? That's right, Drew. How dare you? <laughs> how dare you Just say open that. up to your therapist a little bit. I'm, I, first for off. Sakes, you talk about it on the radio and you won't talk about your goddamn therapist. All right, uh, here's what I'm going to talk about after we get how, over the How you killed me. Well, first we got the big Lakers victory. Okay. That's what I start off with tomorrow morning nice. at the therapist's office. I mean, game seven. Well, Drew, if I'm thinking about it, shouldn't I be able to talk about it? Drew wants me to go in there and cry and masturbate the entire 50 minutes. I know. Now, you know what? I, I, was, uh, I was saying to somebody, and I think this is a good thing, uh, the older I get, the further away I get from caring about uh, what other guys do on another team. I mean, I was like, I would have been crazy for the Lakers 10 years ago, and now it's like, hey, if they win, great. If they don't, great. Don't care. I can, can only care so much about millionaires who are, you know, out. I, I know I'm starting to sound like um, my mom now, but, uh, oh, they get millions of dollars for putting a ball through a hoop. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, like, remember there was a point in your life when you would argue and go, oh, you don't understand the game. And now I'm going, eh, maybe she had a point. <laughs> I'm not getting into it. All right, let's hear, hear something from uh, Perfect Circle. Uh, Drew, pronounce uh, the name of this song so I don't screw it up. Magdalena? Magdalena. Fantastic. Oddly enough, you were speaking about strippers earlier. And that's one of them? Well, it's about them. <laughs> oh, wow. That was a hard out. Thanks, uh, Anderson. You did a good job with that. Anderson had the uh, 10 and the 9 and then the uh, pinky point right at the end. That's a perfect circle off of uh, right at the gnomes. Yeah, did I do that right? That's fine. I get that one right? <laughs> All right. They, uh, Swing and a miss. The, uh, s I see. Mered de gnomes. Mayor de gnomes. Mayor de gnomes. And the way he spelled Mare is interesting. It's mother. The way you forgot <coughs> it's supposed to see. Mare de gnomes. Right? <laughs> If you, if you say it, uh, merda, no, it means poopy names. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, am I saying the S word? Uh, we don't have any French listeners. All right, ready to move on here, uh, Drew? Yep. <laughs> it's a little frog humor there. Catherine? Yes. You're 20. Yes. What's up? Well, I went to my um, yearly gyno um, appointment, and I found out that I have two uteruses and two cervixes. And you never knew that before? No. Wow. Yeah. What were they doing before? Just missing it? You know, um, yeah, they did. They said it was really um, hard to find, yeah. I guess. But um, I, I would think, you know, that they would kind of um, find it the first time, but I guess not. Interesting. Did you have an ultrasound? Um, yeah, I did. Yeah. And I had, a, well, I had an MRI, uh -huh. and um, it was kind of interesting when I got to see them. Is one of them sort of underdeveloped? You know, um, no. They said that they're both pretty much fully developed. Wow. But do, they do, they charge, do they charge you more? No. No. Double. That's nice. No. Passing um, along, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, and they also said that I might have two vaginal canals, but mm -hmm. they can't tell. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. It's kind of different. But they don't have a flashlight? <laughs> How can they not figure that one out? I, I could figure that one out. I don't know. Hold on. Can they figure lazy. that one out? <laughs> I think I think what Seems they're telling like is like a layup that you, you might have. Two, you need tickets to the show. Yeah, <laughs> that she might have two sort of passageways in there, and they couldn't really delineate one from the other. Yeah, probably. That they sort of collapse together. Right. It, it, I can see where that could be hard to see. That. Yeah. Well, my question is. Yeah. Uh, no, not that it would too. There'd be a septum going all the way to the perineum. Right. You know what I'm saying, Adam? Uh, maybe inside there, there's two. It forks out. Perineum. Yeah. I thought the girls have a septum and a perineum. Yeah. Uh, really? No, you mean. Come on, you're talking about uh, bust out the clay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Drew's drawing something. Go ahead. In other words, it's the uterus over here. Uh, there's one over here. Yeah, and the cervix is here and here. Yeah, and maybe there's a fork in the road here somewhere. See, yeah. and, and, and it doesn't go all the way to here. Yeah, that's not. You there. should see this drawing. The fork. great. <laughs> Where's the coos? Hey, it looks right like a horseshoe. Yeah. Right in the beginning there. Okay. 
All right. Plenty of natural light. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, Catherine? Yes. So, so how does that make you feel? Well, <laughs> I was actually kind of shocked, you know. It was just kind of um, unexpected. I thought it was pretty normal, but... Uh, Anything they want to do about this? You know, well, I had a couple questions. I kind of, I was in shock when I found out, so I didn't get to ask all the questions I needed to. Okay. And so I wanted to know, um, they said that um, they were thinking when I wanted to get pregnant, they'd put an IUD in one side. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to know if, um, you know, if they did that, um, would I still be able to administrate on that side? Uh, Menstruate? Interesting yeah. question. Yeah, so, you might even bleed heavy. So they want to put an IUD uh, on one side right. so that the egg and the sperm don't connect on that one side. Right. I and then so. let the uh, sperm go the other route? Because you don't want to try to have dual uteruses pregnant. Yeah. That would not be good. Yeah. Right. Although, what's the big difference between that and twins? twins. Yeah. And to me, it's like they both got their own pad, you know? <laughs> like, I, think you should, I think you should rent the space out. <laughs> yeah, why don't you do that? Oh, yeah. Make yeah. a little money, huh? <laughs> okay, sure. so that's a great idea. All right, what else? Well, not, yeah, not, for another, uh, not for another infant, but like, you know, guys keep their snow tires and stuff there during the winter. <laughs> it'll, it'll, add, it'll add some so, <laughs> slight risk to getting tubal and uterine infections on that side. Right. But, okay, what else? Okay, and then um, I wanted to know if it was possible to get pregnant on both sides. Simultaneously? Okay, and also... Um, yeah, I would say yes. Okay. But judging just by their, the recommendations they're giving you, putting the IUD in. Right. Yeah. It, it only could be done by a black <laughs> blues singer, though. No, uh, no, no mortal man could do that. <laughs> have to be a guy who had like 25 kids. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't pull that off. Oh, good. I could get half of you pregnant. <laughs> I couldn't do both sides. What you need to do is uh, you need to find a partner that has two, two penises. Um, yeah. penises. Yeah. Could you do that? Just a forked penis. Or a really good body. A fork, forked penis. A forked penis. <laughs> so what, what's uh, two-headed, quite literally. So what's the other? Uh, there's a website for that. I have the um, also, um, <laughs> I wanted to know if, if I could get pregnant, you know, if I could um, have twins, would it be... Um, it probably wouldn't be twins. You don't think it would? Well, it would be twins if both sides got pregnant, but they wouldn't be from the same egg and sperm. So they'd be paternal. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like they have concerns about this structurally supporting that. Exactly. Hey, so. Catherine? Yes. Here's my advice. Do not get high. <laughs> I You'll, your head will explode. I'm past that. <laughs> you know, not, not just high. Don't do mushrooms. Yeah. <laughs> you, you get high on mushrooms and think about your two uteruses and you, you will go insane. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? And this is, by the way, why I can't do mushrooms anymore. Because you'll start thinking about Catherine's uteri? No, I'll think about my own uteri. No, you, you know why, seriously, I, this sounds weird, but um, when I was like 23 and I was working construction, I could, I could do mushrooms because I didn't have that much to think about. If I got really high on mushrooms now and started thinking about um, having a, two TV shows and a radio show, I would go insane. I would just start running around like I wouldn't... like. I would freak out. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? Yes, I do. I mean... Having in, two bands. Yeah, have, you got two bands, and you're high on mushrooms. And uh, you're right going, now. going out with nine-inch nails, you, you know, in front of uh, 18,000 people. You, you know what I'm saying? Drew, you don't know. You didn't do enough mushrooms when you were uh, younger, but you would no, freak I out. I didn't do enough. Yeah. 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 Well, there's still time. All right. We're going to take ourselves a little break. Perfect Circles, our uh, guest tonight. We'll be back after this. Yep, it is Loveline. I'm Slick Merkin. That's my partner over there, Dr. Drew. Billy and Maynard are both here from A Perfect Circle. And we are going to hop back uh, on the phones and speak to Lauren. Lauren, you're 16. Yeah, hi. Um, my mom it has been sober for about a year and two months. And I've been noticing that she's acting kind of a little uh, groggy lately and... Um, I found out she's on this medication called uh, Zenital. I'm not sure that's the correct pronunciation. That's but to lose weight. Uh, that, that's not going to make her groggy. Are you sure? That's going to hype her out. No, 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 no. It, it's not even absorbed. It just prevents fat from being absorbed in your system. So, I mean, she said they kind of make her feel weird. They might make her feel a little weird, but they don't make her feel groggy. Okay, so there is a chance she might be drinking again. I mean, because it... Or something. Okay. Well, you would know, wouldn't you? I mean, you lived with well, her all yeah, those years. That's why I'm asking. Her doctor said none of this would do anything, you know, it wouldn't make her groggy or anything like that because I had asked her. I agree with the doctor. Is there anything else she's taking? Uh, no, she's usually pretty strict about stuff like that. She usually doesn't take anything. Zenical only. That's it? Uh, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. All right. Why don't you ask her? Is she, is she in I the... did. I did. That's what I'm saying. The doctor had said... No, why don't you ask no, her, ask her if she's drinking. I did. She got really offensive, but she has always been like that. Well, you, you go to Alateen? Even when she was sober, huh? You going to Alateen? What? Are you going to Alateen? What's that? Alateen? Well, just answer the question, then we'll tell you what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a codependency yes. recovery program for people your age, other, other kids. Oh, who... no. I mean, it, w- she, hey, it wasn't Lauren, like a... It's yeah? for you. Alateen. No, huh? Okay, you need to go. Why? You're growing up with an addicted mom. It's important that you deal with your son. It will have impact on you if you don't, if you don't take well, some steps. Well, I think you're kind of judging me from your previous callers. I'm no, Lauren. It's I, not like... Lauren. Yeah. I, I work in addiction recovery. We always make sure that the teen children of alcoholic parents get into Alateen. It's a crucial okay. part of your health. Okay? All right. Okay. You, then they will help you deal with her relapse if indeed that's what she's into right now. Okay. Just, right. just arming yourself is important. Just Alan, being conscious of that. Yeah. All you, the most important thing you can do in situations like this is take care of yourself. Boy, Lauren went from, uh, I think my mom's back on the juice to, huh? What are you talking about? Yeah. How and, dare you? Yeah. What, what do you mean? No, you don't understand. Yeah. Like, did, did you notice that shift? Yeah. She started off with, my well, mom's been an alcoholic. She just got off a year and a half ago. She's been an alcoholic my whole life. I think she's back on the booze. And she went, like, from that to... What are you talking about? Well, she what felt like a, no, she, 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 it's not about me. Yeah, exactly. It's about my addict mom. You see, and that's what the codes do. Oh. Code pens, yeah. But isn't it amazing, too, how she was 16, she sounded like she was 25? I was yeah. going to say something about that. Yeah. Which is, we have, there's 16 year olds who grew up, you know, normal family, and they're 16, and then there's 16 year olds who've grown up around an alcoholic mom for 15 years, and they sound like they got some miles on them. Yeah. Like, like Lauren had to start being an adult at yeah, nine. Pick up the slack early. Yeah, you kind of get the feeling she was making her own lunches and uh, signing the report card at uh, eleven and twelve years old. I mean, it's like she became. It's like you know some other culture where uh, you know at fourteen they're married, then they have a couple kids. They become a, you know it's like she she became <laughs> an adult woman by a twelve. Natalie. Yeah. You're twenty. What's up? Um, actually, I'm just wondering about the uh, morning after pill. Uh huh. How effective it is? Very. Well, it depends is. when you take it. It's about seventy-seven five percent if it's in the first three days. Okay. What? How f- long after the intercourse? Well, I had intercourse last night, and what okay. happened was like the condom came off. Okay, it's about ninety percent effective if you take. Well, eighty-five percent effective if you take it in the first twenty-four hours. Yeah, I, I actually just took it at like seven today. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, okay. Did, did I take come? one again tomorrow? I take four again tomorrow. And tomorrow morning, yeah. Effective? Yeah, very effective. So will I have, like, bleeding or? Not necessarily. <coughs> no. Really? The, the condom came off in you? Yeah. How'd you get it out? Pulled it out. <laughs> I just uh, dove in there? Yeah. All right. Where was the guy? Was he standing around offering encouragement? Yeah. He was? Cheering. Yeah, yeah that's a little weird. I've never, <laughs> been, uh, never been there for that. You couldn't just uh, go. Out or something? Yeah. Same you different to, hole? It's a, I'm that easy. You got to go up there and get it? Yeah. They don't make a tool for that? Oh, yeah. Oh, they do? But you don't have them in your home. Oh, you don't? No. It wasn't. Pick one of those up. Who makes it? Snap on or uh, rigid? Who makes it? Makita. Makita? Yeah. Solid. Makita. Yeah. Good. They make a battery operated That's one, true? actually. Yeah, Nelly. So, uh, okay, I'm going to, to, uh, to see Nine Inch Nails tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah. And can I drink or do drugs or, I mean, will that affect it in any way? Mm, shouldn't. You're going to feel kind of nauseated, though, so uh, just beware. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Just stick with the weed and the acid. Uh, easy on the booze, all right? What about E? Unacceptable. Oh, please. <laughs> yeah. Natalie, <laughs> please. You're going to see a perfect circle tomorrow night, too, you know. Yeah, I know. Get there right. earlier, you'll miss that's, it. That's actually who I'm going to see. Don't blink. Oh, all right. Well, why do you say you're going to go see Nine Inch Nails tomorrow night? We have a perfect circle sitting right here. Maynard, I love you. Um, awesome. You can prove your love by not vomiting tomorrow. I'm not doing E, please. Please don't do E. Okay. All right? Okay. Show up early. Thanks. Bye. Yeah. All right. Uh, Sonia. Yes? You're 16. What's up? Yeah. Um, I had sex with the guy, like, last night and um, earlier today. Oh. And, like, he was, like, really big. And um, now after the intercourse, I've been having pain. Yeah. How old is he? He's 19. Mm-hmm. 16, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Is he your boyfriend? Um, no. No. What's up? Um, no, we're just messing around talking right now. I see. Just having sex and talking? Yeah. All right. Wow. I don't trust him that much. He's a little bit old for you. Did, okay. you, did you use a condom? 
No. Yeah, so it okay. could be infection, could be a lot of things. What are you What are you looking to do? Did he pull out? Um, no. No. Uh, hey, uh, Sonia, what's your plan, honey? Um, you want to get pregnant? No, not really. Well, what are you thinking? I don't know. Well? Because I've had sex with, like, other guys before. And, oh, like, okay. I've never, like, been in pain like this. I, I know, but I'm worried about you getting pregnant. You understand, Sonia? Uh-huh. Hey, Sonia? Yeah. Listen to me. I, I literally have about 20 seconds with you. You're going to get pregnant. You're going to get pregnant young. You have a 25% higher chance of getting pregnant just because your name is Sonia. I, I'm telling you. And you will get pregnant if you're just having sex with Absolutely. guys unprotected and not thinking a thing uh, of it. You're 16 now. By the time you're 17 and a half, be pregnant. you will definitely be pregnant. Regardless Please of the size. Yeah. don't do that. And if you're having pain, she needs to be examined. So you got to get proper care, too. That is right. We'll take a break. All right, that is uh, that is it. I want to thank Billy and Maynard for coming in here from uh, a perfect circle, and uh, tell you guys to uh, go out and catch them uh, tomorrow night at the pond. If in fact there's uh, still tickets available, I don't even know. But if not, you got to go up to Frisco, Portland, Spokane, uh, Sacramento, Salt Lake City, or uh, and or Denver. And uh, Maynard says you probably can't get some tickets, but uh, you're going to have to start real early tomorrow for the. We're going dead on at eight, and get there early for a perfect circle. All right. Thank you very much, guys. We Thank you for having it. us. Appreciate Good it. luck to you. Uh, Amy Mann in here tomorrow night. Until next time, this is Adam Kroll for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Uh, I just got done whacking off to my mom. <laughs> well, now. This has been Loveline. The stuff expressed on Loveline is not necessarily the stuff of the staff, management, sponsors, or anyone else, including Westwood One Entertainment. Loveline is produced by Ann Wilkins and Gold. Now, please enjoy these birds.